Good morning, YouTube. It is Friday. We made it. I am so thrilled because honestly, yesterday felt like a Friday and I was disappointed that it was Thursday. So I'm in early today. Of course, I have a million copies to make as always. Um, I have a lab to set up. I'm doing a redox titration lab with the AP students today. It's the typical one that's in the um, AP chemistry lab manual. Um, and then with CP today, we are gonna be doing some um, atomic mass calculations. So I'll be getting ready for that. So I have to make a copy of a Pogel for that. Um, but today, I really wanna talk to you guys about some of my favorite classroom routines and procedures and um, you know I felt kind of a little out of practice in the beginning of the school year but there are some things that I've changed this year since I've had students in class that have really helped my classroom to run more smoothly so I will definitely talk to you guys about that a little bit later after I get my copies done. It is just after 10th period and 10th period is usually my prep period but I had some grading and things that I wanted to do and then obviously I had to clean up from the lab that I did with my AP students today. Speaking of my students, they did a great job today. I was very impressed with my AP students. We were doing just the typical mass percent of hydrogen peroxide um, redox titration. So they just standardized a solution of potassium permanganate and then they used that standardized solution to titrate a um, sample of hydrogen peroxide from the drugstore. Their endpoints were awesome their titration skills have improved so much since the last time we did them. So I was very, very impressed with them. And then my CP students were working on an atomic mass pogel and that went wonderfully as well. But this video isn't about those things. Instead, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about routine and procedure. And you may say, Karen, you're a veteran teacher. You know exactly what you're doing with routine and procedure. And I do, but I have to say, when I came back to school with students physically in class with me, I felt a little rusty on the routines and procedures that I wanted to do with my kids. Honestly, I think that was because this is really the first time that I've had my own classroom in this school. And so when you're used to living that cart life, it's kind of hard to decide like where you want students to put things. And I didn't have as many things to manage because I was teaching just on a cart, right? The cart was essentially my classroom. And so now that I have a little bit more freedom as far as like where things can go and how I set things up, it kind of opened up a little bit more um, ambiguity in terms of like how I want to run my classroom and what my routine should be daily. I've had to do some thinking about the routines and procedures that are important to me. And I will say the first time I was introduced to this idea of routine and procedure was when I picked up a book called The First Days of School by Harry Wong. Now this is an oldie, but a goodie. If you're a brand new teacher, I highly recommend it. There's a lot in there that is still very applicable, although it's been written probably more than a decade ago. This is a wonderful book book that really helped to set me up for success when I first started teaching. Now I will say when I first started teaching, I actually had a handout of all the routines and procedures. So it was a little bit more like overkill. But now that I'm a veteran teacher and I've been teaching for a while, I feel a lot more comfortable teaching my students the procedures as we go through the year together. The first procedure that I want to focus on with you guys is talking about my beginning of the class routine. This is so important. I would say if you have any routine or any procedure, it, you got to focus on the beginning beginning of class routine. Now the beginning of class routine for me is where my students come in, they take their cell phones, they put it in the phone zone, and then they go over to the do now bin and they pick up the do now for the day. The students then usually sit down, they read what's on the overhead from my agenda, they'll maybe jot down their homework, whatever they have to do for class that day, and then they proceed to work on the do now. The do now really helps students to settle, and um, here I call it a do now. In my previous school, I used to call it a bell ringer or bell work, but I just wanted to kind of fit in with everybody else and what everybody else calls it here, so I changed it to a do now instead. The do now really helps to focus students, it gives them a chance to kind of work through the content again gives an opportunity to maybe look back at some notes. I love it because it really settles down the class. And while the students are working on these things, I can take a moment and take attendance, catch up with students that were absent, all that good stuff. Another routine that has really helped to transform my classroom environment is my quiz routine. So whenever we're taking any kind of assessment, there's a very specific way that I need the students to sit so that they can maintain privacy and have enough space as they work. And so for me, what I have the students do is in the classroom area, I have students sit diagonally from each other. I have a little um, like divider that I put. It's almost like a picture frame. I think I got them from Dollar Tree. I put just a um, piece of cardstock in there. And so this is where the students 
sit diagonally from each other, so it kind of gives the students privacy as they work. And then I also placed little pieces of green tape where the remaining students should sit. And so when I say the word relocate, or I need you to relocate, the students know exactly where to go, especially because now they have that little piece of green tape where they should be sitting in front of when they're taking their assessment. Another routine that has really helped keep me very organized and also has helped with record keeping is my extra help routine. I call extra help chem parties. I say, okay, you know, I'm having a chem party on Tuesday, so the students will come after school. And I wanna keep track of who comes for extra help. And so the way that I do that is when my students come in for extra help, I have them scan this QR code. The QR code takes them to a Google form where it asks them, what do you need help with today? So it has them actually articulate what they need help with, and then it records the time. And then when they leave, the students have to scan the second QR code. This also takes them to another form, which of course has a timestamp, but it asks them, did I help you today? And then anything else that they want to tell me. This has helped me keep track of the students as far as like who's coming and who's going. It also has allowed me to have more meaningful conversations with parents, especially when it comes down to like summative assessment time. Are the students waiting till the last minute to get extra help? It's really allowed me to collect data and help the students be more successful learners as a result. One of the other routines that I have in place has to do with Pogol. So you all know I love Pogol, but what I started to do was assign the role of the presenter to actually obtain the materials for their learning team. So for example, the students will obtain the roll cards and the handout that they're going to be using for the class. And I love this because it really ensures that I get everything back that I'm supposed to. So for example, if the presenter has to hand in the paper from the Pogol, they can hand that in. If the student has to bring back the roll cards, they can also so stack them up for me. So I don't find different things throughout the classroom. The presenter is in charge of that. And so it makes it run a little bit more smoothly as a result. My calculator routine is one of my favorites. How many times do you lend out a calculator to students and you don't get it back? So whenever my students require a calculator, I have them take their cell phone out of the phone zone, and then I use my calculator caddy for me to hold onto their cell phone while they take the calculator out. So it holds onto their phone the entire time, and then when they're done using the calculator, I watch them take their phone out, and then they put the calculator in place, and then usually if it's the end of the period, they can hold onto their phone, or I'll ask them to take their phone and put it back in the phone zone. This really helps me to make sure that I get back all the calculators that I'm lending out for the class period. Those are five very quick and easy routines. If you're not used to using routine in your classroom, I highly suggest you really think about what you want your students to do and what outcome you hope to have. I think the number one outcome with using routine and procedure is just to help your students feel more comfortable and give your students a very organized classroom environment. What other routines and procedures do you use with your students? If there's anything that I didn't mention or something that works really well, please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I definitely will talk to you guys next week and thank you so much for watching.